Hello folks, I'm John Sullivan, possibly the oldest travel blogger in the world. I've travelled to a lot of countries and seen lots of interesting people and places that I'd like to share with you. The Get Off the Tour Bus blog is about adventure and challenge at any age. If I can do it, so can you. I had to fill in some time with a flight later in the day, so I went to the War Museum in Siem Reap. It was a revelation to me. They used in the country also. Khmer Rouge, Vietnam, uh, and uh, the government, Khmer Republic, like consisting from the US and US. It brought home to our group of Westerners how this very dirty war was fought. You know, between 1970 and 1973, during the General Lenore, and the U.S. joined together again the North Vietnam, like you know, or the North Vietnam very threats in the jungle. Walking here was a bit spooky because the museum itself was a cleared this minefield. One here. This one came with handmade, Khmer Rouge made it, see? It looked like a toy, right? But landmine is still left inactive in my country. This one, Khmer Rouge made it. You can see a gruesome poster of people missing legs and arms, and landmines are still being found. The Khmer Rouge, led by Pol Pot, committed genocide on their own people all over Cambodia. The National Angkor Museum is entered through the room of 1,000 Buddhas. Each alcove holds a statue of Buddha. 95% of Cambodians are Buddhists. The museum introduces you to the long history of Cambodia or Kampuchea, as it's called in Asia. The displays are very pleasing to the eye. Now for the real thing. Angkor Wat is surrounded by a five kilometre long moat, which could become overgrown with water plants and less controlled. They would form a sort of underwater jungle. Moving around here was very difficult with a pram. So we've come to see the monkeys. A guide warned us about the monkeys. They were small, but in his words, naughty. Selfie with monkey. <laughs> they like to steal tourists' food and will jump on your back. It was very hot outside and definitely better inside looking out. In Angkor Wat there are many surfaces and many carvings. This bas-relief shows three apsaras with their tall ornate headdresses. One pool here, one pool more over there and two pool more at the other side. But this is definitely a location where you need a guide. But the four pools that run around the center of the universe are symbolized for the four important elements. If I had a religion, it would be Buddhism, so I took the opportunity to receive a blessing from a Buddhist monk. <laughs> I just got blessed by uh, the, the monk, Buddhist monk, and I've got this bit of string on my hands. Angkor Wat is huge. The outer wall is 3.6 kilometers long. It is the largest religious monument in the world and a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1992. The descent looked daunting to me. I'm hanging on to the rail. Now John is coming down. <laughs> The next temple is called Ta Prom and it's far less conserved. Eventually the stones will be reassembled but for now you can see what the jungle can do. 
This temple was abandoned in the 15th century. Posters display before and after views. Conservation efforts will continue year after year into the future. So maybe two months more, it will be finished and they will open again for tourists to go in. <laughs> if this temple seems familiar to you, it was the location for Indiana Jones' Temple of Doom movie. The temples get pretty crowded and I wondered what impact many, many tourists had on these sites. Now you can clearly see the columns and bar reliefs on the walls. The third temple, called Angkor Tom, has very elegant spires which would have been lookout towers. Its walls are eight metres high, a popular setting for a fashion or a wedding shoot. Some of us, including me, were getting hot and tired as the afternoon wore on. All templed out. We waited with the tuk-tuk drivers. It's better to go on a tour because the buses are air-conditioned and you have a guide. She's braver than I am. The southern gate to Angkor Tom must be one of the best entrances to any side in the world. The causeway crosses the moat flanked by 54 demons on one side and 54 warrior gods, the good guys, opposing them on the other side. I think the good guys won. I hope you enjoyed all that and that you're now motivated to start your own travel adventures. If you want to keep up with me and my travels, subscribe and like below. You can then be sure not to miss my next adventure.